we've gone for a drive inland today, nowhere near the beach after yesterday's little episode. Um, we've gone for a drive that's about 40 kilometers from Streaky Bay and we've come to a place called Murphy's Haystacks. Now, this is actually on private property, a farmer owns the land. Um, so you can come and have a look, um, you can do a day trip and you just um, pay a donation of $2 per adult or $5 a family. You can actually camp here, which we didn't realise, um, which is $10, I think it was a night in total. I'll have to read the sign again in a minute uh, to double check, but yeah, uh, they have toilets here. Uh, the farmer's actually slushing the grass at the moment. Um, but Murphy's Haystacks are some rock formations that, I don't know, maybe they look like haystacks. We'll soon find out, but um, I'll just read the sign here. Um, what it says, so there's the farm there. So there's uh, the rotunda with some tables and chairs. People are gonna have a picnic there. The toilet's just there. Okay, yeah, so it's $10 for camping. $5 for only $2. Honest so, put out donation. I didn't have two gold coins, so we're getting some shrapnel as well. There we go. Oh, look, you can buy honey. Ten dollars for five hundred grams. Geez, that's shit. Fifteen dollars for a kilo of honey. Oh wow. Yeah, that's what I say. It's got toilets, it's got the rotunda, it's found the slush in the grass for everyone. I think the story goes that they look like hay in the early days. They There was a tendency to stack hay, like bundle it up like big mounds. I can't remember what, what the term is, but okay. apparently that's what these, from a distance, these rocks look like so that's why they end up getting the name Murphy's Haystacks because Murphy was the farmer at the time. Ah. So, but we'll I probably should have read up about them before <laughs> we came here. Anyway, yeah, so there we go. I think there's a sign up here that'll tell us all about it. Yeah. Okay, so the sign here does tell us. So basically... Um, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore what I just said, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so basically a Scottish agricultural expert who advocated to produce good hay um, and told farmers that they should harrow their land for the best results. He, while travelling with the coach he noticed these rock formations and declared that this farmer must be um, harrowing his land um, and to produce so much hay and fodder and it was Murphy's property so we got that part right and this is where they became known as Murphy's Haystacks. So from then on passing coachmen described them as haystacks to their passengers but they're technically actually no should be called Inselbergs, a hill that looks like a rocky island rising sharply from the sea. Hey. And somebody has his drone. He's asked if he should put up the drone. It's just picked up wind. I said if the drone goes missing, goes down, he's looking for it. <laughs> there we are, Murphy's Haystacks. This one really looks like a wave, it's so cool.
Uh, here is a seal lion colony, apparently. Um, but I must say, South Australia, your dirt roads are amazing. Not a pothole, smooth as sedans wouldn't have a problem going on these roads. But anyway, I digress. Let's see if we can find some uh, sea lions. I don't have the other mic on at the moment, so hopefully the wind's not too bad. You can hear me. But Chris has got the gigantic lens on the camera, so he's going to hopefully get some good shots of seals if there's any here. I'll show you. clearly with the GoPro but Chris has this lens. I'll put in photos of what they look like. Today we've gone for a fish at the Streaky Bay jetty. Um, didn't realise it was actually this windy today. It wasn't this windy at the caravan park when we left. But anyway, we're giving a go. We're having a fish for whiting or whatever decides to <laughs> come on. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we had a couple of bites but um, nothing since. But anyway, I'll show you around. So there's the jetty. The uh, pub that we haven't been to yet is just over here. Um, and I'll show you over in the distance is the other caravan park that's right on the foreshore. This is the pub straight up there. Like it was just laughing at us. That's <laughs> <Probably laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I will let you know if we actually catch anything. <laughs> okay. As usual, Tracy's out fishing me. That's her second one. Hang on. I don't know what it is. It's stripy. It's pretty. Alright. I don't know if you can see down there, but there's thousands of bait fish out here. Directly down in front, you can see all those silver flashes if you can. Anyway. Oh, that's making the noise. Yeah. It sounds like a frog. <laughs> go, 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 go. 
<laughs> I can feel it vibrating. It's like making these funny strings. So would you if you had a hook shoved in the corner of your mouth? Oh, well, it's his fault. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm trying to get the hook out. Went into his nostril or whatever it is. Hole on top of his mouth. Come on. Maybe fish flies in the top of the bag. Crazy? Yeah. There's flies in the top of the tackle box. The um. Stay there for a minute. Yeah, the T handle one. No, no, the T handle. The red. Oh, red. Yeah. Oh yeah. Work it down. Oh, yeah. That's it. Oh, it. Got it. All right, dude. You're gonna have a sort. No, he's through the door. Oh, oh no! Oh no! I think the bird got it. Did it? Nah, you got away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been ironic. Get caught, then throw back, and the bird get you. Anyway, keep fishing. See if I can catch. Actually, catch one. Oops, sorry. Wobbling. And still wobbling. All right, we've arrived in uh, Smoky Bay. So just uh, did a day trip uh, today. We did actually go all the way to Sejuna. Chris has got the drone going at the moment. Uh, we did go all the way to Sejuna, but we didn't film there because we'll probably go back there before we hit the Nullarbor eventually later on, but we've still got more of South Australia to look at before we start doing that. Um, <laughs> seagulls making noise up in the pole. <laughs> anyway, this is Smoky Bay. That's the jetty and there is a caravan park over there. Um, and it's good to see a jetty with um, shelters so you don't get sunburnt if you go fishing. It's just really good. Apparently Streaky Bay are getting that built at some stage. Um, I found out when I was at the hairdressers yesterday you get all the local gossip. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a, a nice drive. Um, yeah, Smoky Bay's got one shop that's post office as well as bottle shop as well as supermarket as well as takeaway store. So <laughs> all one-stop shop. But, yeah, so it's a nice day out and um, We'll head back to Streaky Bay for the rest of the day. See you then. exploring again today and uh, we've just pulled up at a beautiful spot oh my god it is amazing um, so the little town is called Venus Bay here in South Australia and um, the view at this lookout have a look at the colors in that I'll get my buff head out of the way just amazing so when we drove through town Venus Bay has one caravan park it looks quite large it's right on foreshore um, 
there was in the caravan park kiosk building thing that seems to be the post office and maybe food supermarket as well and then there was a pub I'm not sure if it had takeaway food as well but yeah it looks like a nice little town Chris has got the drone out not going anywhere near the cliffs I don't think we'll be brave enough to do anything like that for a long time but anyway some of the houses and the views I just can't get over the blue that or turquoise it's turquoise it's absolutely magnificent but Chris is getting some drone footage so I should be able to show you from up above the colors hopefully and um, yeah we'll continue on I think we're making our way to Elliston but there might be spots in between so we'll let you know on the way Next up, uh, we've uh, gone to a place called Mount Camel. Mount Camel. Camel. Mount Camel yeah. Beach. Um, I'm. I looked at the reviews on Wiki Camps, and it's funny because some said, "Oh, you can stay here overnight, just overnight," but there's clearly no camping signs just over here, so you can't stay overnight. Um, I'm not actually sure how you get down to the beach other than clambering over There's no obvious tracks no um which i'll show you in a second um but if you could get down there and people do because the reviews say that the water is and beach is beautiful for swimming so uh yeah i'll show you It's just on another level, really. Oh, absolutely. The colour is insane. I love it. To say to Chris, it'd be, make perfect jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> the, the variations of the blues and the, the colours. It's just amazing. Definitely worth while stopping at these points on the way and just having a look. But, yeah. But, um, yeah, you'd have to definitely kind of scramble your way down. There's no actual path down there but anyway we are lucky today the wind is not too bad yeah but it's definitely not like you see in some of these other channels that it's all perfect all the time it's far from the case uh, you'll have it's one or two days windy maybe. most yeah. of the time there's occasional nice days where it's either not windy at all or just low soft wind but yeah. um yeah that's rare we have discovered the west it's been not too bad but you, the wind is a, it's just a factor the weather is just a factor of being on the road you That's you right. can't expect picture perfect days every time and and the channels that are showing that all the time really it gives a misconception of 
every area um, that yeah. it's just perfect there go there because it's perfect it's it's not the case yes there are perfect days yeah we've had some beautiful perfect days yeah but we would probably spend in a week four days at the caravan at least yeah um other days might be just to you know a trip into town to do shopping or whatever but then you know we try and hit a good day like this where we go for a drive out further and um explore the area but that's that's the life of traveling the realistic life of full-time traveling um if you were just doing it say a 12-month lap and you had a time frame that you had to do each place by yeah maybe you would have to go out every single day or every second day or whatever but when you've got no time frame there is no point of going out every day you've got to people got to learn to sit back and relax that it's not nine to five you don't have to go That's somewhere right. um yeah there's so. always stuff to do around the caravan absolutely maintenance yeah. cleaning washing yeah clean the car empty the car out reorganize the van whatever so this you're always going to have something to do that's right and if and you've got nothing to do pick up a book that's right and it's okay to actually do nothing and like the other day i got out my adult coloring books out just it was raining and yeah. we not adult as in adult well, adult just well, coloring books coloring for, books for adults yeah <laughs> Well, it's not a kid's colouring book. <laughs> Alright, on that note, off to the next point. <laughs> Alright, next up we have arrived at Woolshed Caves, apparently. So we've got to walk down the stairs. I actually forgot to get the GoPro out so I'll have to I did record on my cam um, my phone so I'll have to add that that was the called the tub there was a little cave in there so I'll have to add that in uh, note to self
is uh, called Monument Lookout. Um, apparently a Mr. Millard accidentally drowned in this spot on the 24th of June 1928. And it's got this nice monument here. But the colours are getting even more amazing. Have a look at this. insane like it looks like waters that you see at Hawaii or the Bahamas or you know Maldives this is crazy